I am Oz, the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Welcome to the land of Oz, the place where all things Emerald City exists and the lions and tigers and bears can roam free together without aiding each other. If you are new to this channel, if you are new to this area, if you are new to this town, if you are new to this suburb, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment in the section below. And most importantly, watch. these. This video is specifically for the people on YouTube. You will be watching another version of this in another tint or another shade on Instagram. My Instagram, at Mano Steel. But anyway, let's get right into the review. Let's go, Charlie. The Wizard of Oz sees a tornado ripping through Kansas in the Midwest of the United States. Dorothy Gale and her dog Toto are whisked away in her house set to the magical land of Oz. They follow the brick road, the yellow brick road, toward the Emerald City to meet the wizard. Me, the wizard. And en route, they meet a scarecrow that needs a brain, a tin man missing a heart, and a cowardly lion who wants some courage. The wizard asks to bring, asks the group to bring him the broom of the Wicked Witch of the West to earn his help. Let me ask you good people something. Let me ask you good citizens something. When the average movie buff thinks of a film that is considered an oldie but goodie, what is the first movie that comes to mind? Well, the answer is The Wizard of Oz. I hope you would have guessed that because The Wizard of Oz, this live action adaptation of L. Frank Baum's fantasy novel series has always been my favorite movie ever from back in the day with its heartwarming, charming, and family-friendly feel. And what I mean back in the day, I mean like way back in the day. I'm not talking about 70s, 80s, and 90s. There are so many great movies during those eras. I'm talking about I'm talking about during the golden the the silver and golden ages. I don't know which decades those will be considered the silver and gold ages. Y'all can let me know in the comments. But this is probably my favorite film of that era. I don't I have never seen a lot of movies of those times, but this is the best one so far. Let me explain. The Wizard of Oz may be older than most cult classics because you can't consider this a cult classic. It depends on how you feel about The Wizard of Oz. But this did not stop the value and popularity of this classic from spreading across countless generations. Like, if you have not seen The Wizard of Oz, then there is something missing. Feasting my eyes on this movie was and always will be such a blissful experience. That keeps a smile on your face most of the time, from the singing and the dancing to the innocence of the protagonist and the storybook aesthetic. In a way, The Wizard of Oz feels like one of the first visual representations of what it feels like to get swept away into a fairy land, fairy tales, so and so, and I guess that is why it is such a rich experience. Because that was the whole point of movies to begin with in the first place to help you to escape your reality, to help you to run away. The fantasy adventure is so iconic and irresistible that everything about the movie gets stuck in your head for a long period of time as you are not st as you as if you were still not in Kansas. Hmm. But the magic would not feel visible without the infamous transformation from black and white to Technicolor, which you can find that version on my Instagram. Check it out, Mano Still. The Wizard of Oz was one of the first movies to use the three strip color process, which at the time was beginning becoming more familiar in movies in the 40s and 50s. Now, as far as The Wizard of Oz goes, its pop culture status all lies within the reboots, parodies, Broadway plays, and many other adaptations, including the most iconic Broadway play of them all, Wicked. Now, whether we are talking stage play or movie, the characters in The Wizard of Oz always appear like they came from a children's book, and that is perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. I have no judgment against that when you consider the source material. The opening act sets up and foreshadows the different individuals that Dorothy will come across in the land of Oz. From the Scarecrow, to the Tin Man, to the Lion, to the Wicked Witch of the West, and eventually, the Wizard of Oz. I. The Gale Farm residents like Hunk, Zeke, and Hickory, that is the actors, those are the actors that play Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Lion, would say words or phrases that match the same actor's character. Like, you know, Hunk talked about talked about having straw in your head, Zeke talked about having courage, and Hickory talked about using your heart for the good of mankind. Judy Garland perfectly captured the high level of desire and wonder that lies within Dorothy Gale. 
It's like one minute we hear her singing over the rainbow, and the next we see every color of it. I did say how this movie really expresses a feeling of heartfelt charm through the vivid colors and environments. But not everyone in the land of Oz were, were characters of peace, evidently. And it includes, but is not limited to, the munchkins, the midgets, who sang songs that not even a grown man of my color could get out of his head. <laughs> characters like the talking apple trees and the flying monkeys are the only inhabitants of Oz that you would call dreadful. Now, if you have seen or known The Wizard of Oz by heart, then you know that the four central characters have the same goal, but they seek out different treasures. The Scarecrow wishes for a brain to use. The Tin Man wishes for a heart to use towards others. And the, courage, and the Cowardly Lion wishes for courage to embrace. With it being based off of a children's book, you would think that there is an overall theme. Although the story has a message, but just like Thor Dorothy, the audience has to find out for themselves and the answer cannot just be given to them just like that. Dorothy learns that you do not have to live in a fantasy world to live in peace because the peace is all in the comfort of your own home. And there is no place like home. Say it with me, everybody at home. There is no place like home. There is no place like home. There is no place like home. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 98% score. The Wizard of Oz is a timeless classic in every sense of the title. With its fantastical feels, delightful characters, the illuminating and enlightening tone, and storybook elements to it. I'm going to give it a well-earned 10 SOs out of 10. So that is my review on The Wizard of Oz. You can let me know what y'all think of it in the comment section below. You can click here to subscribe. You can click here to watch to keep up to... Watch the entire Wayback Wednesday playlist, and I'll see you guys next time with my next few videos. Ta-ta!